what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel so as you can see i had a pretty eventful weekend hanging out with micah doing that no prep stuff man that stuff is awesome but i also want to thank all the subscribers that took time to chime in on the poll that i posted about a week ago i guess it was on the videos that they want to see more of and surprisingly tech came in at the top of the list above even the history video so thank you for that kind of gives me a little idea of which way i need to go so what are we talking about in this video well you really need to watch dv's video that he did on velocity stacks because that's kind of the area in which we're going to be discussing for this video i'll put a link to it up in the upper corner so you can go check it out This is our test subject. These uh, velocity stacks I found on eBay. NOS Mr. Gasket um, velocity stacks. Still in the original boxes. Now get this. It didn't come with these filters. These filters are K&N and I got those from Summit. But when I got these and pulled them out of the box, the paperwork said it was from 1976. It didn't even look like it had been out of the box. I mean, they were that pristine. So, you know, every once in a while, you can still score a really good find on eBay. It's just rare. So these are old school, and we're gonna see if they make power, lose power, or if they just don't do anything. What's your guess? Hard to say. It's going to depend on all on what it does with the air fuel. I know. I'm, I'm kind of curious. Out, if it leads it out a little bit, it's going to make all the filters might hurt it, it's going to take power. Right. Because we already know the truck's running a little ridge right now. Uh -huh. So if it does that, I think you're on to something. So you Hard heard it. Well, that's why we test. You know, you got to learn. picked up uh, right at a little over three horsepower and four foot pound of torque at the wheels by the velocity stack and you can see the gains right there the raw numbers gold right. the green yeah the gold in the green that's what you need to be comparing nine times out of ten filter always makes more power say that one more time a lot louder Nine times out of ten, filter on a carburetor always makes more horsepower. I know, it leaves you asking more questions, right? 
you know, the million dollar question is, did it pick up power because of the direction of airflow going into the carburetor? Or was it because the fact that it actually leaned out the air fuel mixture? Because when we did this test, the carburetors hadn't been on there very long and they were running really rich. I'm talking like in the nines in the main circuit at wide open throttle. So by putting this, uh, the velocity stacks on there and, and repeating the test, it actually leaned it out quite a bit. So what do you think? You think it picked up power because of that? Leave it in the uh, comments. I'm kind of curious to see what you guys think about that. So I've got Casper running pretty good. I've got, the last time we took it to the track, it duplicated the passes within one hundredth of a second. That's not too bad. I can live with that. But I also learned that we have issues. Now, you know that part of the charm of Casper is its period correctness, if you will. And that hood scoop that I have on top of the hood can't be any more old school, really. It's patterned after the two-lane blacktop 1955 Chevy that James Taylor drove. And um, it was actually pioneered by Bill Jenkins. Hence, I'm wearing the Jenkins competition shirt today. But I realized some shortcomings with that design, and DV and I have been talking today about some testing that we're going to do upcoming to show you, the viewer, exactly what's going on. So let me give you a play-by-play -play of what happened when I took it to Mooresville Dragway last time. Now, prior to taking the truck to the track, I had actually richened the carburetors up by two jet sizes, every Venturi in the carburetors. So that should have made a sizable increase of air fuel ratio. It should have decreased it probably about a half a point. And you should be able to see that on the color tip of the plug. You should be able to see that change. Because when I ran Uncle Tony, the spark plug looked ghost white. Extremely lean, and in fact, I would call it dangerously lean. And that's just off of my experience of reading plugs. Um, but, we go to the track at Mooresville, even with this increased jetting, and I pull the spark plug out, and guess what? It looked exactly the same as it did when I raced Uncle Tony. And in fact, there was another clue there. Uh, when you raised the hood, on top of the uh, carburetor was saturated with raw gas. And then the wheels in my head started turning. The only thing that I can think of that would cause that is that scoop that I love so much. I may end up loving to hate it because what I believe is happening as the truck is building up mile per hour down the drag strip. It's actually pulling fuel out of the fuel bowls. And it's also getting into what David has referred to in his video as booster buffeting. Which means the carburetor is not actually metering the air fuel mixture properly from the booster itself. Because of the turbulence involved there. So DV and I, we're going to go through and we're going to create a series of tests and we're going to mount my camera on the truck so that you can see the airflow. Uh, we're going to put some tape around the scoop, put some cotton on it so that we can see which way the air is going and then you're going to get to see something really cool. And that is a GoPro mounted right above the carburetor so that we can see it firsthand as to what's happening with the booster itself at speed. Which gets me into another topic. I had some comments saying, 
you need to take that thing to the dyno and get it dialed in. Well, if you will remember, this engine was ran on the engine dyno and it was tuned to perfection. But the issue with that is, that is a static situation. The engine is stationary. Whereas, when the engine is in the truck and we're going down the track, that is very dynamic. The airflow across the carburetors can wreak havoc on the air fuel mixtures in the individual cylinders. Now, I know that this is not necessarily a problem that's experienced with EFI, but for a carbureted car, that airflow can be make you or break you. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what we come up with. I also have some little tuning secrets for tunnel ram carburetors, a little tool that we're going to make. And in fact, it's in one of my very first videos. So you don't want to miss that. I think it about covers it. So until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. I will catch you later.